My husband cannot speak Korean. Well, he can, but he's very, very, very struggleful yeah. about his Korean. So when I was younger, my parents, for a couple summers, put me into Hangul Hakyo. Hangrakyo, which is a Korean school to learn Korean. The last time I went there, I think I was in grade, maybe in grade three. And for some reason, I was so bad in Korean. I remember being paired with like the JKs or like, no, 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 the grade ones or like the senior kindergartens. I was like four years older than everyone else. How could they do that to you? Is that I even don't a know. Thing? That's how it was. I remember that and I just- That's so traumatizing! I, I just- And in the home, speaking of my parents, it's really just basic talk, like, Oma pa. <laughs> that's not even basic talk, that's like caveman talk. Oma <laughs> pa. In grade 9, our school board offered Korean language. Yes. And so I took level 1 Korean language and for the first time in my life, I learned how to read Korean. The Korean alphabet. It's actually very easy. In grade 9? Yes. Wow, good for you. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm mistaken. I was in grade, grade 12. Oh. I was in grade 12. <laughs> Why did you think you were in grade 9? Because it was a grade 9 course. Oh, it's a grade so nine now level. again you're with the three areas. You're I guess I was in a path of discovering my identity and I wanted to revisit my Korean heritage, try to learn the language. Yeah, that's and so great. So I, I took a level 1 Korean course. And I was with a whole bunch of other younger folks, and I remember our final project was to make kimchi. kimchi. And so I just asked my mom to do it for me. <laughs> but a great accomplishment. I learned how to read Korean. You read at the same speed as I did. We we did try to test it. Mm -hmm. We both like Actually, were trying to read the yeah. same sentence. She's a little faster because really? you practice more, you read more, you're mm. more exposed to it. And then. I met Nami when we started dating. I took on a new job and I started working at a Korean supermarket. Why did you work there? And I worked there for you three years. You didn't know how to speak Korean. I All you knew was on my pop. Yes, and I think there were two reasons. One was I wanted to. Learn yes, Korean. you wanted to dive into that mm -hmm. environment where and you force can myself only... where I have to mm -hmm. learn and speak Korean. That's great. Good and for second you. is I just needed a job and I needed money. Okay. But I came out of there breaking the ice of my fear to speak Korean because in the past, I would be just silent. I, if someone speaks to me in Korean, I kind of play dumb. And in the beginning when I worked at the Korean supermarket, there would be these old grandmas, Harmony there, and they would come up and say, they would ask so many random things about very specific vegetables, like, But in the beginning, I'd be like, and I'd run away. I, I, I would say like, I'd be, I'd be like, just wait a second in Korean, chakamanyo, and I'd run away because I'm so scared to speak Korean. And then you get someone else to help them. Mm -hmm. And then later I would learn, oh, you, sh you shouldn't be saying chakamanyo, but chamshimanyo. Chamshimanyo, yeah. Which, what's the it's, English? It's a more respectful. It's like, oh, wait a second, compared to like, please, please wait a moment. Please wait a moment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After a few times doing that, I'd like run over and go to the manager and say, where's the cut? <laughs> And as I, you know, through the years, as I'm learning this place and all these vegetables and all the produce, because I worked in the vegetable area, the produce section, and I started to gain a confidence. I'd be like, oh, yogi mm. sayo. Yeah, and then I'd help people but around. But then sometimes you would make mistakes. Yeah, because, okay, so one mistake was, it was yeah. an ajumma, it was a, it was a mom. It was, it was ajumma, it's like a, it's a mom. Lady, yeah. It's like a lady, and she came and <laughs> asked like for pechu. So she asked for pechu, and she went up to me and said, pechu is sale or pechu toy is sale And then, because I'm thinking about two things at once. I'm trying to think about how to respond to her in Korean. At the same time, I'm thinking about where is oh, the pechu? Do where you have is do more? we have more? <laughs> and for some reason, I made this terrible mistake and I said, pechu up so. <laughs> and then I realized my mistake, and then I ran I away. <laughs> so basically, for those of you who don't know, it's like saying, oh, we do not have any at this moment compared to, no, we don't. <laughs> That's true. I, I missed one word, yo. Yeah, I which should, is the should, polite form of... Yes. <laughs> I should have said, pechopso yo, but I said, pechopso. <laughs> and then immediately I realized, oh my gosh, that was so disrespectful. Wait, wait, <laughs> where did you go? I just went to the back. <laughs> did you help her after? 
She's still looking for that venture to this day. Oh my god. That's a cringe moment. Another big mistake I made was, you know, working in the produce section is tough. Uh, uh. Because we didn't have a forklift, and so oh yeah, whenever, you guys were just lifting everything from the trucks. Yeah, whenever a truck pounds. came, you'd have like like two thousand pounds of watermelons mm. all by hand and cart. During petru season, we would get hundreds of boxes of petru. When it came, one day I came in and I went inside the kitchen where our team manager is and every all the people work in the kitchen. I'm like petru <laughs> ojaseo. <laughs> the honored cabbage has come. And then everybody started laughing. I'm like. What, what's so funny? I just said pet, pet you all should say. Because you are speaking to seniors. <laughs> Your sister. So you believe that that polite form is in respect to speaking to spe seniors. But that polite form he was using is actually in respect to speaking about seniors. <laughs> so we're speaking about someone more respectful. Yeah. So he was <laughs> lifting up the pet you so respectfully. So I was like, the honorary. <laughs> I was pretty much saying, so I came into this kitchen and I was like, You I, thought you were saying like, oh, the cabbage has come, everyone who is senior above me. Yes. But then you were saying, hello, everybody, the honorary, the honorary cabbage, cabbage, cabbage has come. There's this Korean superstition of when you're speaking to someone and while you're speaking to them, if you suddenly hiccup, that means you're lying. And so... I'd always be eating while I'm working here. Or if you sneeze, this is in Japan too. If you sneeze, it means someone's talking about you somewhere else. Another thing is, if you're walking and your shoelaces go undone, it means that someone's talking about you. That's the Korean one. And so I think, I, I don't remember what I was eating, but I was eating something. I was called to go out to the front to help someone. And I'm like, okay, and I shove everything in my mouth and I go. I, I went over and did something and I finished the task. But right at the moment when I'm trying to get back to the back, a lady comes up and then stops me to ask me where something is. I, I, my mouth is so full that I thought it was hilarious. I'm trying to swallow it in and I did. With food? Yeah. And then I hiccup right when I'm trying to speak. <laughs> I'm like, oh. And then I thought that was so funny. I started laughing. <laughs> He gets into this these moments where he thinks something is like undeniably hilarious and he laughs for a good like 5-10 minutes. And I started laughing. Laughing. And, I, and then I couldn't get myself to tell her where what she was what, what, what it, she was looking for, yeah. Where it was. And I just kept on laughing. <laughs> laughing and hiccuping and she was like <laughs> She was so confused. I think she said like, did I say something funny? In Korean? Yeah. And then <laughs> I, I, I just had to walk away. <laughs> I was, Are you even I, a worker I, there? I, I couldn't stop my hiccups. So for Koreans growing up outside of Korea, one of the many fundamental differences for men growing up is that we don't have to go to the army for two years. Mm, if you're not a Korean citizen anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge part of the culture in Korea. For example, to apply and attain any job in Korea... You have to have some sort of military service already done. Yes. But for Koreans who have gone through the military service, especially for my fellow employees, they were all older Korean mm. men in their 40s to 60s. Mm. And they grew up in that culture. Mm. And for anyone who hasn't, they kind of have a bias against them. Right. So here I am, like a Canadian a boy. Second gen. Yeah, young, privileged, second gen Korean boy who doesn't really know Korean. Working with them and mm. going through a lot of conflict with them, I learned a lot. They were like your fathers and brothers. It really was. And so I felt like even though I didn't go to the military service, mm -hmm. I had a second hand a second hand experience mm. and I matured a lot through mm. working with them. Another way I learned Korean was that I worked for one of my friends who started up a phone store. He wanted three people to work with him to reach out to the community because this, where the store was located was there was a huge big Persian Iranian community. There was also a big Korean community. And there was a big Chinese community. And so he wanted me to represent the Korean community. And so he went on about to pay a few hundred dollars to have my name and my number to be on Kyocharo, which is like the number one <laughs> commercial advertising newspaper in Toronto. And there my name and number was. And so I was getting like five to ten calls a day. And it was your personal phone. And it was my personal cell phone number. And these people, and people still called up to like five years later because they would keep these things, right? right? And so here I am who knows very little Korean 
very little about the phone business. And very lo- little about the terminologies in the phone business too. And I'm getting so many calls. I'm like, and the thing is, the advertisement said, nee. unlim- <laughs> it said unlimited calls, unlimited text. There were so <sighs> many people who said, are you Korean? Do you know how to speak Korean? I just learned the hard way and everything. So how do you learn? How do you learn language? Do you learn through listening and auditory or do you have to learn the hard way like me? Do you have to write things out and read? Do you have to immerse yourself fully in the situation go to the country and learn? Or, or do you just pick it up watching TV shows? For me, every way is difficult. I think I need to have full immersion and do everything actually. I don't learn That's true. any single way. I gotta do every single way and I take like 10% from each single way. So I'm such a slow learner. Okay, you're a thorough learner. I have to be Ross, I know nothing at all. I will you buy young. Alright, thanks. See you.